What's going on guys, Armand here. So a couple weeks ago, I decided to pick up the new 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. And after using it on a couple projects and really giving it a thorough test, this thing is honestly blowing my mind. Like I cannot believe what Apple has done with this thing. It is like ridiculously fast. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to make a video about it and share some of my results with you guys. So if you guys don't know who I am or what I do, I'm a full-time landscape and travel photographer. I also do video and editing work on the side. So spec-wise, I got it completely decked out. It has the M1 Max chip, 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, honestly, I don't know if you would need 64 gigs of RAM. I think 32 gig, probably good enough in most situations but i did get the maxed out video card which i think that is worth it but like i've even seen videos where the base macbook is ridiculously fast too like honestly any of these m1 processors are amazing i also want to say i am not pro mac or pro apple fanboy i've had apple computers and pc computers over the years like i've had it all so i'm not really biased in one direction or the other so let's get into it okay so when i was doing the speed test with this screen recording did make it go dramatically slower so i don't have screen recordings of renders real time but i do have some b-roll with my camera of it and i have the results here in my notes and if you guys are wondering which gpu process mode i use i tried both opencl and metal there wasn't really a difference between the two so i just stuck with metal okay so the first test was with sony a1 h264 footage uh shot in 100 20 frames per second, 10-bit 422. Every clip on the timeline was colored. 10 minutes of footage on the timeline. All these tests are gonna be with 10 minutes of footage just to keep it consistent. But 10 minutes of footage rendered out in two minutes and 41 seconds, which is amazing. Like, I think it rendered around like an average of 90 to 100 frames per second, somewhere in there, which, you know, for I feel like for most people, that's going to be the kind of footage they're you're usually editing with anyways. I don't know how many people are on the go editing with like Aria Alexa footage or red footage or whatever. I, I did test out the red camera too, so we'll get to that. The next test in DaVinci was 24 frames per second with the DJI Mavic 3 shot in 5K H.265 color adjustments on every clip and that rendered out in four minutes and 29 seconds and i did also try it on my desktop build with the nvidia 3090 i'll put the specs of my computer somewhere here so you can compare the two uh and that rendered out in five minutes and 44 seconds and honestly i'm a little salty <laughs> because my desktop costs way more than the macbook does and this thing renders it out like way faster however when it came to rendering red footage that is where this laptop did not shine <laughs> versus the 3090 at least so red 8k raw transcoded to h264 4k full debayer on all the clips with color adjustments 3090 did it in five minutes 59 seconds and the macbook pro did it in 16 minutes six seconds which even though it's slower it's still really impressive that a laptop can render red 8k raw footage with full debayer that's the key part here the full debayer the fans did kick on and i think that's important to note that in all the tests the fans never kicked on until i rendered the red footage take with that what you will to my knowledge the 16 inch macbook pro has the same exact specs as this i think there's like like a high power mode or something like that with the 16 inch that this 14 inch doesn't have but still like either one you go for like the specs can be exactly the same i did go with the 14 inch just because it is smaller and lighter and easier to travel with i feel like if they did like a 13 inch version of this that'd be too small i kind of wish this was the 15 inch just to get a little bit of extra screen real estate for editing and stuff but 14 inch still great screen okay so the next test i did was in adobe lightroom i didn't test this against the 3090 to import 
994 photos. I thought it was a thousand, <laughs> but it's 994 photos, which is still a lot. Only took nine seconds to import, which like, like, come on, that's amazing. And to just like scroll through all the photos was like basically instant. Like literally if you're a wedding photographer or you shoot a lot of time lapses on the go, this is a no brainer, like, come on, like, this is amazing. However, <laughs> to export 994 photos, full settings, 4K export, that took 42 minutes. I don't know if that's a long time. I, I guess, I, I, you know what? I would assume that's a long time because it's color adjustments on every clips and you're compressing the photo, you're downsizing it and converting it to sRGB from Adobe RGB. You know, that's a lot of photos. I can't even think of any instance where I would export that many photos. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what, maybe just for time lapses, but that's about it. Clicking around like between photos and just doing like general adjustments on anything, opening it in Photoshop, like any of that stuff, it's all instant. There's no lag. So if you're working on a single photo or multiple photos at once, like it's gonna handle it easy. Uh, same with the footage. I do have to point out when I was scrubbing through the footage in DaVinci, even the red 8K stuff, there was no lag on any of the clips. Quick thing to point out, but fantastic. Okay, so on to Adobe Premiere, Creative Cloud. They just came out with, well, I don't know if they just came out, but when I got my laptop, there was an update for it. So I would assume maybe it just came out. And the update is for the M1 processors to be utilized with Premiere Pro. Doing the same test I did in DaVinci Resolve, uh, H.264, Sony A1 footed, 422 10-bit, 120 frames. And just for reference, I do shoot in the slow and quick mode and I have it so that when it shoots it, it plays back at 24 frames. So essentially it's 24 frames on the timeline already. There's no like stretching out the clips or anything like that or retiming. 10 minute 4K timeline exporting in H.264. Color adjustments on every clip with Lumetri Color. That took eight minutes and 58 seconds. Dramatically slower than DaVinci Resolve. And I think that's because DaVinci is just so much better optimized hardware wise than Premiere Pro is, unfortunately, because I do all my edits in Premiere. <laughs> do also have to mention, I did try exporting in Media Encoder and it did actually export about two minutes faster than just straight out of Premiere. Uh, maybe Media Encoder is also better optimized with the hardware for exporting than Premiere. Okay, so the H.265 Mavic 3 footage uh, shot in 5K. 10 minutes also on the timeline, color adjustments on every clip. Uh, this exported in 4 minutes, 39 seconds. I have noticed that the M1 processor is fantastic with H.265 footage. Same with H.264 footage. If you're editing in either of those codecs, which I think most YouTubers and just like general content creators, they're really just dealing with H.264, H.265 footage since that's kind of becoming the standard. I heard H.266 is supposed to be coming out. Maybe not soon, soon, but probably in the near future. Okay, now the red test. <laughs> red 8K raw, 10 minutes on the timeline, exporting to H.264, color adjustments on every clip, foldy bear, the interface definitely lagged considerably, maybe not like really bad, but given it was like foldy bare, I think we can give it a pass. <laughs> so when I tried to export this to H.264 or 4K, the load time was so incredibly long and the number just kept going up and up and up. It was just like not even worth it. DaVinci did it no problem, Premiere not so much. I did try it on the 3090 and that exported in around 10 minutes. So about real time. Also foldy bear. If you're traveling a lot or maybe you're cinematographer DP or something, you're trying to find maybe like a new computer to uh, edit your red footage with. I still think this could be a great option. Maybe if you're a Premiere editor, just edit in Premiere and then export an XML and bring it over to DaVinci and just export it over there. I don't think this is a computer for editing huge projects on with red footage. That's for sure. 
like don't edit a feature film with this. <laughs> Probably not going to work. H.264, H.265 footage, I think you can get away with it because this is actually more powerful than other computers I've used. I did used to be a digital imaging technician, if you guys don't know what that is. It's the guy on set that manages all the footage for all the films. Usually, like if they're shooting on Ari Alexa, RED, uh, the Sony cameras, whatever it might be, whatever camera it was, you name it, I've worked with it on set and in post. If I had this laptop <laughs> back in 2014, 2015, I would be stoked on life because trying to wheel around the huge camera cart with like the big rack mount case to make everything functional, that was not fun, especially desert shoots. I hate desert shoots. Photography's easy, but trying to wheel your computer around in the desert, would not recommend. So final thoughts on the new MacBook. Does it live up to the hype? Absolutely, 100% it does. This thing has been getting really, really good reviews. And honestly, I would buy this again. I would recommend this. Not sponsored by Apple, but I would recommend this. It's fast, it's lightweight, it has a color accurate screen. I'm loving the display is fantastic. You know, it just kind of checks all the boxes. Like I would, you know, closely compare it to a 3090 build, which is insane. So to be able to have that kind of power on the go, like, like, come on. If you have like a 2020 MacBook Pro or a 2019 MacBook Pro, is it worth switching over? Maybe not yet, unless you need all of that power or you notice maybe your computer's like really slowing down. So I guess in that case, that's kind of up to you. But if you don't have a laptop or maybe you're looking to upgrade like an older computer or something, like this thing's amazing. But if you're in the market for this right now and you're a photographer, video editor, colorist, whatever, it's awesome. So yeah, hopefully you guys found the video helpful. Let me know if there's any other tests maybe you guys wanna see with this, or if you have any more questions about it, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please subscribe if you aren't, like the video, and I'll see you guys very soon.